Hello, my name is Alex Jones and I am an occupational therapy student here at the American Stroke Foundation. Today's video will be about tips and tricks for traveling after having a stroke. Traveling may seem very overwhelming, especially after you've had a stroke and now with the COVID-19 pandemic coming to an end, but it does not have to stop you from visiting loved ones or seeing new sites. The main key is to be prepared and flexible. Here are some tips and tricks to make for an enjoyable travel experience after you've had a stroke. Training for your trip is one of the first things you can do before you travel. Paul Berger, a survivor of stroke and author, says that taking a practice trip was very helpful for him after experiencing a stroke. He stated, start small. You can drive somewhere in your own car and learn from your own experiences. Then you can work your way up to longer trips. A practice trip can help you learn what travel tricks will work best for you before you begin taking a larger trip, dealing with bigger airports and packing. Training for your trip can include working up to the distance that you want to walk or the amount of time you plan to be out and about. If possible, you can try taking longer daily outings at home or practice walking longer distances. TSA PreCheck is a feature that you can purchase when flying to make the security and travel experience a little bit easier, especially if you have limited mobility or use a walker, wheelchair, or other mobility device. The cost is $85 for five years or $17 per year. Below are excerpts from the TSA PreCheck website. Basically says that the screening process is determined by your ability to stand and walk, so if you're unable to stand and walk through security without the support of a person or a device, you can be screened from your chair. Um, an officer will have to inspect your wheelchair or scooter and you'll have to remove any pouches or bags, but it does decrease any of the changing or walking that you may have to do when going through security at an airport. Below are some tips that Paul Berger, survivor of stroke, says helped him when traveling at the airport. He says that he would check as much baggage as he could at the curb and only took a small lightweight carry-on with him on the airplane. He uses a shoulder bag because he only has use of one hand, so it makes easy access into his bag. And he also packs it with basic toiletries, medications, phone, and his extra travel information. At the security line, he says that he sits down and empties his pockets, puts all of his wallet, keys, notebook, pen, and puts it into a Ziploc bag so he can open it with one hand. And then he puts that into a shoulder bag, which he can easily place and take off of the security belt. He also says to try and get an aisle seat and purchase a nonstop or a direct flight to make traveling easier. If you have to make a connecting flight, you'll want to make sure to plan for additional time to get to your next gate. Taking shoes off and on at the security line is another factor to consider when traveling. Um, wearing sneakers with Velcro, Velcro straps to make it easier to take shoes on and off, as well as a brace if you wear one, is something to consider. Wheelchair and early boarding is a feature that many airlines provide. So you can consider asking for a wheelchair and early boarding at your gate. However, every airline is different. So flexibility again is important and it may be helpful to travel with someone who can advocate for you with the airline personnel. Rental carts are also an option at an airport. If you have multiple bags, you can use this to push your luggage from the luggage claim area to your rental car or wherever pickup area you need to go to. Some airports also have a shuttle or a golf cart service to help transport you and your bags to your gate or any other destination you may need in the airport. If you're traveling with a wheelchair, it is a good idea to call the airline ahead of time to let them know that you use a wheelchair and that you may require some additional assistance. Bulkhead seating is an option that you can request for your flight, and these seats are typically more spacious and make it easier to maneuver while on a flight. If your wheelchair or walker cannot be carried in the cabin, you can check it, and if you have one, you do not need to check them until you are at the gate. 
You can also request that your wheelchair or walker be returned to you on the jetway at your destination airport instead of having to travel to the baggage claim area first. If you are going on a road trip or have a long drive to an airport, it may be a good idea to plan for frequent pit stops while you're on the road. It can be very difficult to sit for long periods at a time without using the restroom, especially after having a stroke. It can also be overwhelming or challenging to find accessible restrooms or restrooms that have enough space for multiple people if you require assistance when using the restroom. But there are some free apps such as Sit or Squat or Flush Toilet Finder that allow you to find wheelchair accessible or add any other features that you need to your search. They also provide directions and reviews on the restroom's cleanliness and things like that. Most hotels should have accessible rooms that you can call ahead of time and request. There are a few things that you can look for when looking for an accessible hotel room, such as an accessible bathroom, which usually include grab bars, seats, and extra room for safety. If there is no elevator where you are staying, you can try and request a room on the ground floor. Um, looking for places that have restaurants or restaurants nearby them. And when possible, finding a place to stay that is within easy walking distance or has accessible parking close by for any sightseeing attractions. You can also view the place online before you book it. Most hotels should have websites with online photographs so you can get a look at it and see if it'll be right for you. And it is encouraged that you call and ask questions before booking your room to make sure that you will have everything you need for an enjoyable experience. When you have made it to your travel destination, you will probably have some sightseeing or activities that you want to participate in. Bringing a cane or a seat can be a helpful tool, even if you don't normally use a mobility device to walk, but many surfaces when traveling may be uneven, making it a little more difficult to get around and having one of these devices can be a good sign in crowded places for other people to make note that you may have some mobility or balance issues. Bringing your own chair or a seat can be a good energy conservation tool if you're traveling longer distances. And there are also a folding cane seat that is a great portable option for you to take rest breaks when traveling on foot. These are available at many stores such as Lowe's and Dick's Sporting Goods at fairly inexpensive prices. If you experience aphasia, traveling can be frustrating or overwhelming as well. Many museums and tour guides have different accents, they talk fast, and they give you a lot of different information at once. Some ways to help that are writing key items down in a notebook or having a family member or caregiver write those down for you, such as your gate number, where you need to go, and that way, if you need to, you can show someone and they can help you. Um, you can take any free brochures from a museum or somewhere that you're going to look at so you have that information to read later. And buying a postcard or a picture as a souvenir is a good reminder and a way for you to show other people what you've done on your travels. Packing is always a daunting step in the travel process for anyone, I think. So especially if you have medications and equipment that you know you need to bring, it will be important to make a list of your necessary items ahead of time and make sure that you have everything that you need by the time your trip arrives. You can plan ahead for your medications or other items that you'll need to pick up prior to your trip, as many pharmacies and stores such as that may close for major holidays. Making a written or a typed copy of your travel itinerary that includes the date and times, includes information about your flights, hotel addresses, phone numbers, car rental information, confirmation numbers, and any other important information will be really helpful. And it's a great tool for memory and reference throughout your trip. It is also a good idea to check with your airline about their current mask policy after COVID-19 and their photo ID policies prior to your flight to make sure that you have all of the items that you need. It is important to note that you should get clearance from your doctor before making travel plans to ensure that it is safe for you to do so. Every survivor of stroke is completely different, so not all of these tips may be feasible for everyone. 
But again, checking in with your doctor and your therapist before you go on a trip will be important to ensure that you are safe and equipped. Thank you all for watching, and I hope some of these tips and tricks may make you feel a little bit better about traveling after your stroke. And I hope that you are able to see your loved ones or go on a fun trip sometime soon.